Hi everyone, Gundam Fax here for a 20th and brand new episode of our special edition Lore of the Universal Century. Today we're going to the One Year War era in an attempt to answer a particular question, which is... Yep, in this video we are going to explore all the variants of the Zanzibar class cruiser, how much they differ from the regular model, when did they appear, and extract every bit of mechanical knowledge we have on them so far. But let's start by the beginning. What is exactly the Zandibar class? A limited production mobile cruiser developed by the Principality of Zion, the Zandibar was an entire line of ships serving as Zion titular amphibious carrier during the One Year War. Officially entering service in UC-76, the Zanzibar wasn't ready till mid-UC-79 and had been designed specially for a particular purpose, Rome Earth Skies. At the beginning of the Earth's invasion, Zion had relied on HLVs to keep the supply line between space and Earth, and without surprises, its transport vehicles had proved a liability. Not only HLVs were renowned, so particularly vulnerable, but they were not optimized for full-scale combat, be it in space or on Earth. Fortunately, Zion naval engineers had anticipated this and had already produced a design capable of not only space travel and self-sustained atmospheric reentry, but also of flying in one G environment undisturbed, the Zandibar. Back in UC-76, Zion engineers had wrongly believed that there was no possible way a standard battleship could just over in Earth's skies, and as such, the design for this Zanzibar ship would need to be a drastic departure from other space battleships. Small note, their belief was completely understandable. The Minovsky craft wasn't a sink yet, and without this kind of technology, Zion engineers instead chose for the Zanzibar a design resembling a big aircraft. This is where the main difference between the Pegasus class and the Zanzibar class resides when it comes to how they can respectively fly on Earth. In the Pegasus case, the Minovsky craft ensure the ships stay afloat in the sky, and the ship engines are used to direct the course, a slow but secure way to fly on Earth by hovering, and which enabled the ship to change course or land fairly easily. In the Zanzibar case, a hybrid jet rocket thermonuclear reactor enabled propulsion both in space and Earth, and the particular design, inspired by regular aircrafts, ensured the Zanzibar to be able to fly in 1G. Unlike conventional aircrafts, the Zanzibar supports its atmospheric flotability with the bottom hull, rather than with the main wings, which are only its auxiliaries. This necessity to resemble an aircraft is also why the Zanzibar bridge is in the bow, which is rather vulnerable but couldn't be avoided in order to be aerodynamically shaped. Unfortunately, this resulted in a subpar performance in comparison with the Minovsky craft equipped ships, since the Zanzibar needed air stripes to land, couldn't easily change course, and notably needed support rockets to escape Earth's gravitational influence, since the Pegasus class would never have to bother. Still, this doesn't mean the Zanzibar was just for show. In fact, aside being a mighty autonomous carrier, the Zanzibar held in reserve plenty of other assets, notably an impressive firepower. First, the Zanzibar possessed four stationary but retractable megaparticle cannons to protect its front, and fun fact, these cannons could be replaced by flashlights as seen with Rambarol Zanzibar. Aside these cannons, the raw firepower was ensured by a Pegasus-like type twin-barrel megaparticle turret located in the middle section. As personal point-range defenses, the Zanzibar could count on five twin-barrels anti-air turrets disseminated all over the hull. For anti-ship combat instead, this ship replaced petty missiles launchers with only two launchers, firing a particular type of missiles named the G-types. These large missiles were rather slow, but were powerful enough to destroy a warship in a single hit, even in the case of a large ship like the Magellan. 
In terms of mobile to transport, the Zanzibar internal storage enabled it to transport usually 6 mobile suits or 3 mobile suits and 2 mobile armors, but in some cases, the class was shown to be able to crew up to 9 mobile suits. Production-wise, high cost and difficulties of production resulted in only 16 Zanzibars being produced, but nonetheless, they were almost all put to good use. The Zanzibar not only proved a reliable asset on the ground, but also a fearsome autonomous carrier in space, being sometimes chosen as flagship by fleet commanders who liked Guazins and preferred it to the Chive. Akin to the Pegasus class, 14 out of the 16 Zanzibars have been revealed so far, with the Zanzibar, Madagascar, Ragnarok and Svamal, respectively Ralphs, Makuves, Shaws and Kisilia ships appearing in the original series. Aside them, we know of the two seen escaping Odessa, the Tempest, Vampire and Cerberus of the Return of Zion game, the Keranos and another unnamed Zanzibar of Advance of Zeta, the Ingolstadt from Shard Deleted Affair, the Kergeren from the 8 Mobile Suit team, and the Zangri Azul from Mobile Suit Variation Raiden, which, like the Ingolstadt and Keranos, we will later explore. Now, that's enough setting for today. Let's get to our ships. Let's start our list with a minor variation of the Zanzibar, a ship nonetheless instrumental to the plot of Mobile Suit Variation Raiden, the Sangre Azul. One of the 16 Zanzibar produced, the Sangre Azul was once assigned to the group of Zion Aces known as the Chimera Corps, and even had the honor of serving temporarily as their mother ship. Externally, the Sangre Azul only different with its sister ships is embodied by its name, the Spanish for Blue Blood, and is thus painted in blue colors rather than the standard dark green paint scheme of the Zanzibar. Aside this, the Sangre Azul has been branded as a Chimera machine, with the emblem of the Chimera Corps having been painted over the turret hatch. Externally, that's it, so the Sangre Azul would seem like an insignificant variant. However, internally that was not quite the case. In fact, the Sangre Azul mounted aboard a unique navigation system, which enabled the ship to be able to cruise unmanned and more importantly, to automatically track down and locate the mysterious place known as the Minaret. A legendary place, the Minaret was an enigma on its own, and was rumored to hide the treasure of the Zabi family, which led to many people searching for it, and by extension the Sangre Azul. However, the truth was much darker. Minaret was a giant factory ship orbiting the Earthsphere, in which it not only a large mobile suit factory plant, but also internal data banks hiding copies of the totality of Zion Mobile Suit Project blueprints. Worse, Minare didn't eat the treasure of the Zabi family, but the instrument of revenge. The horrendous truth was that the ship stole samples of the Astaroth, a bioweapon capable of literally eating entire ecosystems and which was thought to have been neutralized by the Watingos in UC-79. The Zabi contingency plan was to liberate Astaroth on all colonies, wiping all the sites and thus forcing the survivors to return to Earth, thus ending the Universal Century. At the end of the One Year War, ex Chimera Corps member Jacobus Nod and Earth Federation General Oxnercliffe, both possessing partial knowledge of the Minare threat, colluded into hiding the Zangri Azul, as it was the only way to get to it, with the blue Zanzibar being secretly stored inside Jaburo. In UC-90, the Minare was targeted by ex Chimeras, notably Umar Lightning, and other Earth Federation groups, which led to the Zangri Azul fleeing in space as Jaburo became once again a battlefield. There, the Zangri Azul was targeted first by the Earth Federation Compay Garrison, then by no other man than Shah Aznabu, now Kazal Rim Daikun, who planned to use the Astaroth inside Minare as an alternative to capturing 5th Luna for a drop. Considering Shah eventually used 5th Luna in Shah's counterattack, we know he didn't get to the Sangria Azul. but let's hope no other factions 
ever capture this big blue boy? Continuing with a design from Mobile Street Variation Ridden, this time a new class derived from the Zanzibar to Zanzibar Kai. As the one year war entered its final stages, the Principality of Zion realized, perhaps too late, the danger posed by the Earth Federation 13 Autonomous Corps aka the White Base and its V Project prototypes. With their multiple successes, notably during the Battle of Odessa, Jaburo, and now against the Coast Conflict, the White Base Corps was starting to become a serious threat that needed to be dealt. Examining the records they had on this heroic unit, Zion engineers realized that it was against Zanzibar's, respectively Ralph's and Shaw's ships, that the White Base had struggled the most, and when they reported this discovery, the top brass immediately ordered the construction of a boost version of the Zanzibar, the Zanzibar Kai. Because the basic design was sought to perform adequately against the White Base, the Zanzibar Kai retained the exact same form of its predecessor, but instead of adding modifications, it included a new addition to the rear hull. This addition was a supplementary cargo bay unit, which included a new residential block for the pilots, but more importantly, an electromagnetic catapult for mobile suits, a technology Zion had acquired by studying similar catapults seen in the Pegasus class, and which neither side had implemented yet to a large scale. With this catapult, the six mobile suits of the Zanzibar wouldn't need to exit from the hatch anymore, but could instead be properly launched at high speed, which resulted in better deploying rates and interception capabilities. Once the plan was approved, three Zanzibar Kais were eventually manufactured, with the first one being assigned to the Chimera Corps and being renamed Chimera, becoming their signature mothership. Surviving Abawa coup and the One Year War, the Chimera became a ghost vessel, lurking around in the Earth sphere and transporting some surviving members of the Chimera Corps, notably Human Lightning, before resurfacing in UC-90 and becoming involved in the search for the mineral. As for the other two Zanzibar Kais, they sadly were never deployed during the war and remained in storage, never to encounter the ship who justified their creation, the White Base. Time for a status memory ship. Now, we present you the infamous lair of Sima Amphibious Marines, the class which spawned the Lily Marlin, I'm calling out the Zanzibar II. In the waning days of the One Year War, Colonel McCuve had launched a standardization program through the World Zion Army, something which resulted in what would be known as the United Maintenance Plan. Very famous are the mobile suits spawned by it, like the Zakukai and the Rig Dome 2, but many often forget the plan also affected some ships, like the Musai on Chivei, which resulted in the Musai final production type and the Chivei. Even lesser known is that the United Maintenance Plan affected the Zanzibar class, which is the cause the Zanzibar to exist. As long as its predecessor, but taller and wider, the Zanzibar 2 retained most of the original design of the Zanzibar, but unlike the Zanzibar Kai, which barely included an addition, the Zanzibar 2 was a more cautious and extensive modification, notably when it came to the firepower. The four original stationary megaparticle cannons were removed, and replaced by twin barrel megaparticle turrets, offering a more diffuse firepower and the ability to fire them sideways as they could rotate. As for the main twin barrel megaparticle cannon, it was kept, but a second similar turret was added on the ventral hull, raising the fire power drastically. In addition, the anterior defenses were upgraded, with their number going from 5 to 8 twin turrets, and their calibre going from 80mm to 120mm. Far power aside, the Zanzibar 2 featured another important advantage, which was that because of its wider size, it could transport 8 mobile suits, which meant that at max capacity, it could transport 12. Even better, the ship mounted retractable mobile suit launch catapults, which unlike federal designs, use a handle for the mobile suit to grab, and were better designed than the Zanzibar Kai catapult. Also notable thing to mention, 
the Zanzibar 2 learned of the shortcomings of its predecessor when it came to atmospheric flight, and thus mounted six primary thrusters instead of four for longer flight abilities. This resulted in an extraordinary performance, and it was believed that Zantibar 2 to have the flight abilities and mobile suit launching capacities of a Pegasus class, while possessing the raw firepower of a Magellan class. Production-wise, we don't know how many were made, but we know about four of them. The first, the infamous Lily Marlin of Simagarao, was known to have been a brand new ship, but the three others, the Cerberus 2, the Tempest 2, and the Vampire 2 are said to have been upgraded Zanzibars, which raises a question, is the Zanzibar 2 usually a modification or a brand new ship, since both coexist? Let's leave that to your headcanon and let's move to our next variant. If you saw the Zanzibar Kai was a lazy modification, let's show you worse with a Zanzibar variant from the manga shot deleted affair, the Ingolstadt. After the one year war, two lucky Zanzibars had managed not only to survive, but also to flee the Usfer and find refuge in the remote New Zealand remnant base, the Axis Space Fortress. One of these two Zanzibars, the Ingolstadt, was modified upon arrival, and when Shah decided to return to the Usfer in UC-83, to inspect the Republic of Zion, the Ingolstadt was the ship chosen to carry him on his crew. The main blatant difference between the Zanzibar and the Ingolstadt is that the Ingolstadt is just a Zanzibar with a whole lot of additional parts at the rear. In fact, the ship mounted a gigantic booster piece which combined two actual booster pieces with four spherical fuel tanks, tanks which were taken from the Guazin class and were known to carry Urgul. With this kind of propulsion, the Ingolstadt gained a massive upgrade in terms of thrust, which resulted in longer cruising range, longer operational capacity, and of course, superior speed. These factors combined enabled this Zanzibar to be able to reach Earth from Axis in just 5 months, when a Guazin class would need 6 months to achieve the same trip. Now, I admit, I have been unfair to the Ingolstadt. In fact, the ship still features several changes in comparison with the average Zanzibar. First, the main megaparticle turret seemed to have been improved with a larger caliber and is now capable of shooting down ships with only a decisive hit. Aside this, the Ingolstadt interestingly replaced the four stationary megaparticle cannons with retractable twin megaparticle cannons, which resemble the ones seen in the Zanzibar 2, but doesn't seem to be able to rotate. Last but not least, a new hatch is featured in the central dorsal section, and can be used to recover mobile suits, but also to launch them vertically. As for its deployment history, the Ingolstadt was used by Shar Aman and company to go to the Republic of Zion, and the ship would prove its worth against some federal vessels along the way. After carrying back Shaw to Axis, the Ingolstadt would shortly participate in the civil war occurring there, and in October UC83, Shaw finally returned to the Usfer, using the Ingolstadt as his vessel. The Ingolstadt would then be left to the Ambrosia base, leaving Shaw to infiltrate the Federation and become Quattro Bagina. This video on variants have been cool, but you are perhaps asking for more. Till now, all the Zanzibar variants we have seen so far were not fundamentally different from the regular Zanzibar, being more or less just repainted, modified and upgraded variants from the very early UC-80s, not fundamentally something different nor evolved even when they appeared in UC-90. Yet, the Zantibar class possess this kind of variants. I'm naming the protagonist mothership in Advance of Zeta Traitor to Destiny, the Keranos. Initially an old but particular Zanzibar fielded during the One Year War, the Keranos had nothing special about it, except it had the bad luck of being stationed at Solomon when the eponym battle occurred. There, the poor Keranos was sunk, and when the Federation finally sized the Space Fortress, they initially tossed it aside. 
When Solomon effectively became Pompeii Island, a major federation base, the wreckage of the Keranos became center of interest once again, and since it was only all destroyed, the Federation Corps of Engineers decided to repair it and use it to run tests to improve their knowledge about the Zion Navy. This resulted in the Keranos being reborn as a hybrid ship, mixing Zion naval designs with federal upgrades, which was becoming a trend at that time as seen with the Alexandria. Among the upgrades was notably the bridge being fully repaired and enlarged, which enabled a better view for the crew and made it easier for the engineers to increase the armoring, thus increasing the survivability of the crew. Weaponry-wise, the Keranos kept the traditional stationary megaparticle cannon and G-missiles, but interestingly, the front anterior twin turrets were replaced by single barrel laser turrets, which had higher penetrating capacity but slower cadence of fire. Now, the Keranos' greatest upgrade came through the renewal of the entire rear section. The wings received far more and better placed subthrusters, going from two polydesign units to nine units. As for the four rear main thrusters, they were kept, but upgraded, and instead of being cobbled together as they were initially, the Keranos instead separated them to the left and right, which freed a lot of space. The freed space enabled the engineers to mount a mobile suit storage hatch, which could effectively allow mobile suits to launch from the rear of the ship. In UC-85, tests over the Keranos were finally completed, and the ship was sent to the Earth Federation Air Force. There, an influential high officer, known only as the sponsor, arranged for the Keranos to fall in the hands of a ragtag group of Exion and ex-federal cadets who formed the core of an early anti-Titans organization, later renamed after the ship, Keranos. Keranos would continue to use the Zanzibar through the Grips War, and would later ally with Karaba to take down the Titans on Earth. This time, the Zanzibar served on the good side, and redeemed its class at last. And we have now completed today's topic, and I hope you will like it. This will be all for today's video, but stay tuned for future lore content delivered on the same channel. Hit the like button, and most importantly, comment and subscribe as it will really help the channel to flourish. So long fellow new types, until the time of our next special edition.